Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name's Soleil and I garden in his own 5B in mid-Michigan. Today we have an overcast day and so it's a great day to be outside and to be doing some kind of planting or anything that you need to get done when it's kind of a little bit more heavy work and it might involve a little bit of grunt work. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We are going to be actually taking out an arborvita ball and we are going to be potentially moving a spirea so that it has a little bit more room. So let me show you a little bit what we're talking about. I'll show you the tools we're gonna to be working with today and then we'll get the project underway. All right, let's take a look. So this area is the area we are going to be working in. There's not a lot of space. And what's happened is I have this spirea that I really like right over here. And it's a gorgeous spirea. It gets some nice blooms on it. And it doesn't have a whole lot of space. So we're going to definitely give it some more space. I don't think we're actually going to move it today. Um, I think we're just going to open up the area for it. But we'll see what happens. Because sometimes when you start a project, it can change course pretty easily when you're gardening. This is the Arborvita ball right here that we're going to be taking out. And in order to do that, first we're going to start by clipping back some of the branches. And then we are going to use our Root Slayer shovel to get these out of the ground. And hopefully it won't have too big of a root system. So let me show you a little bit about the tools that we have here. So I have these nice kind of uh, loppers here and they are a Fiskars brand titanium and they work really well. They have this nice ratchet on them that allows them to give some extra power that even if my arms aren't strong enough, this helps make them strong enough. So it's really, really good at cutting through branches, living or dead. If that one is not big enough, then I also have another tool right here, which are some bypass pruners. And these open really, really wide. They have a large mouth and they're able to get through one and five eighths of an inch. And I will tell you, I have probably used these to clip through a good two inch branch before. These are best for um, live wood and not dead wood. And then last but not least, we have our two root slayer shovels. And I've got both the small one that I use regularly on a daily basis. And then I've got the daddy of the two, which is the regular old root slayer. So you can see the difference in the size here. And the big one is just too heavy for everyday use for me. It might be good for those of you who are larger than my small five foot frame. And uh, so definitely, check those out if you're interested in these. I always keep a link to these in the descriptions of every single one of my videos because I love this tool. It's not sponsored, but it makes my life a lot easier in the garden. All right, so let's just get set up and get started. Again, we're going to start by pruning the branches off so that we can have a little bit more room to work and be able to do the digging. I tried last year to prune this back a little bit with uh, some electric head shears that I got because I thought, well, maybe I would like it if I could keep it small, but I'm just not happy with it in this garden bed. I feel like it brings about the wrong vibe and I can't really explain it, but it just does to me. So, you know, if you don't like something or it's not making you happy or as Marie Kondo says, if it doesn't create a spark, I think that's what she says, it's time to get rid of it. So that's what we're doing here. And this has been in my garden for a really long time, probably 10 years. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, even though it was supposed to stay rather small. nice soft wood so I'm being able to prune this really easily. Let's hope that 
when it comes to digging it out, it goes just as quickly. As you can see, we have done a really good job of getting those branches clipped off. So we actually have a little bit of space now to come in with the shovel and be able to try to dig out the stump. So let's hope this goes really well. I'm hoping because we've had some of the rain recently that that will help with the roots being not too hard to dig out. Just right now pulling back a lot of the mulch and the leaf mulch that has been added over time to this area. All right, well, that goes on the blooper reel. <laughs> wow, I wasn't expecting that. I just completely broke the uh, basket hanger. Now I'm just trying to get the rest of the soil as much as I can off of this so I can leave it behind in the garden bed. Boy, am I happy with how that came out. And I did use, I just started off with the big root slayer shovel. I figured why not go with the big guns. So there we have it. Whew, quite a bit of work, but well worth it. It opens up a really nice big space there, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is grab a rake and just kind of fill that in. And then I want to come down here. And I am actually going to transplant something over here. So I'm going to, since that one went so well, dig up this arborvita right here. Because again, as I was talking about in some of my videos, you know, we really just... When you have an awful lot of arborvitas, you have to consider the fact that they suck up a lot of water from the soil and it can take away from some of the other plants that you have in the garden bed. And while they provide winter interest, there are other things that can provide in winter interest that don't take up quite so much water. So we're going to take this one out as well. But let's um, grab a rake and I'm going to kind of rake this area together and we'll, we're going to just leave this one for now. All right, so before I make any sudden moves with this wonderful new open space in my garden, I'm going to think about it a little bit because I have a few options other than just moving this spirea over. Like this spirea could end up in a different spot and I could put something else in here. So I just want to think about it a little bit to make sure I make the decision that it's going to be best for the longest period of time in my garden. All right, let's head down over here and we will dig out this arborvita right here given how well that last arborvita came out i am actually just going to dig this one straight out and hopefully i'll get it out in one piece and we'll be able to potentially offer it up to someone so that they could use it in their garden if they'd like All right, now I just really want to get, again, as much soil off of this as I can. So that's only been in this space for a few years and it was quite easy to dig up. So I'm rather pleased with that. And I'm going to put another hydrangea in this place and I believe it's going to be my limelight hydrangea. So I'm going to also dig out these foxgloves and weed out, I see a couple Canada thistles back here as well. So I just want to make plenty of room for it and not have to worry about any perennials sitting at its base. Now my goal here with this is to have something that's a little bit bigger, again, that won't take up so much room as that arborvita, uh, because when it gets to its full size, the arborvita would probably be 
about 30 feet tall and about five feet wide and um, would suck up most of the water in this garden bed. And this hydrangea, this Lescance can do hydrangea over here really needs the water. So I am going to use a limelight hydrangea in this corner because it's nice and tall and hopefully it will create some shade in this area so that it helps to protect this hydrangea from the late afternoon sun a little bit and will keep it from you know having some of that late afternoon wilting effect. So let's get the rest of this stuff out of the back of this bed and then we'll get to planting. These foxgloves have actually really struggled in this area so I think it's just been a little too dry for them as well. And I find that the paniculata hydrangeas really don't mind having a bit of dry feet. They at least seem to be better than these foxgloves. These Canada thistles are super annoying because no matter what you do, you can't ever get their full root out unless you dig like three feet down into the ground. So it's really frustrating. Um, you know, you can kill them with Roundup is probably one of the ways. Otherwise you can just keep pulling them and keep pulling them. And you know, the better and better that the soil gets over here, the less they like it, it seems. So. I'll just continue to use lots of mulch and amendments in my soil so that they don't want to be here because it's too nice for them. All right, let me grab the hydrangea. Oh boy, guys, we are going to have to work quickly. I don't know if you can hear it or see it, but we are starting to get some raindrops right now. I don't know if it's going to rain hard at all or not. So I'm just gonna put this limelight hydrangea right about in front of me here. And yes, like I talked about in the video the other day, I'm taking a little bit of risk with the buds on this being all ready to go. They look great. The plant itself looks great. It just looks like it's ready to put its blooms out. And it is possible that I will lose some of those blooms, but it helps that I am transplanting this or planting it on a day when it's overcast. All right, I think that looks about right. Here comes the rain. Ah, I've got to get this in. Boy, I hope this is in the right spot. I gotta get this camera out of the rain, you guys. But I hope you enjoyed this video and checking out me planting uh, this limelight hydrangea. I think this is gonna look really nice. Add some significant height over here because we need it. The next thing that is going to be that tall will be the maple tree over there. And the strawberry sundae could get a bit taller than this as well, but I believe the limelight will surpass them all. So it'll be like, a small tree. I'll, I'll trim it up into like a tree form. All right, well, signing off for now. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video and there's the beautiful limelight behind me. I'm super happy with it. I can't wait for it to get bigger, of course, 
Well, we'll see you next time. Bye.